I feel today is going to be a breakthrough day here on the Power 5. Last time I said that, we went 5-0. and Yesterday, just 2-3, and but still on a 97-69-5 overall run with free plays here on the show. Five more, of course, in MLB coming up for Wednesday, many of which involve teams in the playoff chase. As a reminder, go ahead and comment down below at any time with your thoughts on these selections. We start, number one, Cubs-Phillies under eight. This is a 6.05 Eastern start, by the way. Cubs out of contention, but 110-4 yesterday in Philly. The Phillies have already clinched the NL East, but still trying to get home field advantage throughout the playoffs. They currently trail the Dodgers by a half game. Clearly, we should look for a lower scoring game today, and that has a lot to do with the starting pitching, specifically on the Phillies side. As they said on Christopher Sanchez, said it many times before here on the program, But Sanchez is a totally different guy at home where his ERA and whip are 2.05 and .96 respectively. Let's compare that to his numbers on the road. 5.02 ERA, 1.66 whip. Some of the most drastic home versus road splits of any starter in all of baseball. Lately, Sanchez has been pretty great wherever he's pitched. How about a 2.05 ERA his last five starts? Overall, Phillies have gone 5-0 in those five games. Then, You've got Assad on the mound for the Cubbies. Only time in his last 10 starts he's allowed more than three earned runs was at Coors Field two weeks ago. So under eight it is. Would not play this at a lower number, however. Uh, At 640 Eastern, it's Reds at Guardians. This will be our second play. The Guards won 6-1 last night, are very much still alive for the top spot in the American League. Already they've clinched the Central Division. The Reds recently fired their manager. They're out of it. I like the under eight here as well. Jacob Junis was originally slated to start yesterday for Cincinnati. Got pushed back today for personal reasons. He's a big reason why I'm jumping on this under. In three starts since becoming a part of this Reds rotation, Junis has pitched a total of 16 innings and given up just two runs on six hits. On the other side, you've got Joey Cantillo going for Cleveland. In his three September starts, the 25-year-old has gone 16 in the third innings and allowed just three runs on eight hits. So I like both starters, and you got the best bullpen in baseball with the Guardians. So second straight under to start today's Power 5. Number three, the Yankees are the third play. They lost yesterday. 5-3 to the Orioles, who are now officially heading to the postseason, almost certainly as the top wild card in the American League. Yankees still have the inside track for home field advantage in the AL, one and a half games up on the guards. But the pressure's mounting a little bit in the Bronx, isn't it? Yes, we will back Mark Zinno's favorite starting pitcher in pinstripes, Nasty Nestor, who has allowed one or zero runs in four of his last five starts overall. Cortez also tossed six shutout innings the last time out. He, or the last time, pardon me, he faced Baltimore. But this play is more about fading a Baltimore side that was in party mode after clinching a playoff spot last night. I know Eflin, who is starting Wednesday, has been great for the O's since coming over in the trade with Tampa. But this one means more to the Yanks. Back them on the money line around minus 140, 705 Eastern. Number four, Rangers A's under seven and a half. As we turn to some of the later games on tonight's slate, neither of these AL West also rands have anything to play for. At this time last year, of course, the Rangers were gearing up for a World Series run. Meanwhile, baseball will soon become a thing of the past here in Oakland as the team is moving, which is kind of sad. I like the under here because Cody Bradford's on the mound for Texas. Eight of his last nine starts, he's allowed three runs or fewer, including seven shutout innings last time out against Toronto. And then Oakland has this kid, Brady Basso, starting. I talked about him last time. He's now made three starts, given up just three runs total in 16 innings pitched. All three of those runs were allowed last time out. Now, the A's won yesterday 5-4 with a walk-off in the bottom of the ninth, but they only had six hits for the game, so they were pretty lucky to get the five runs. I don't think we're going to see a lot of runs here tonight. Oakland's got a pretty good bullpen as well, especially Mason Miller on the back end. Again, 940 Eastern start in Oakland, the second-to-last home game ever in Oakland for the A's. Number five, lastly, we will talk about a couple of teams with a lot to play for, the Padres and Dodgers. Guys, I was wrong on yesterday's show about the series opener between these two teams. Said the Dodgers would have the lead after five innings. They did not. Their lead over San Diego in the NL West is down to two games. The Padres have won 41 of their last 57 games overall and very much 
look the part of a World Series contender. I will back them as underdogs tonight. Full game as we have what looks to be a tremendous pitching matchup of Dylan Cease versus Jack Flaherty. Honestly, I view that matchup as a bit of a wash, although Cease has now gone back-to-back starts without allowing a single run. Bottom line for me, it is just becoming too difficult to ignore how well this Padres team is playing. Five straight wins overall, 9-1 and one their last 10. They've allowed a total of 16 runs in those last 10 games. That's less than two per game. Just uh, incredible pitching for San Diego, who is also now 8-2 and two their last 10 head-to-head with the Dodgers. They've owned the Dodgers. Maybe they're going to steal the NL West pennant, but let's learn from yesterday's mistake and back the Padres tonight as underdogs. Full game, plus 115 on the money line. All right, let's recap the Power 5 for today, shall we? In case you missed anything. Cubs, Phillies, under 8 was number 1. Number 2, Reds, Guardians, under 8. Number three, the Yankees, minus 140 on the money line against Baltimore. Number four, Rangers A's, under seven and a half. So that's three unders. And number five, Padres, plus 115 on the money line against the Dodgers. You can feel free, again, leave any comments, questions, concerns about those plays down below. Love hearing from you guys. Drop your favorite bets for Wednesday as well in the comments section. And if you could do me a favor take some time out and smash that like button. Would very much appreciate that. Always appreciate the support as we continue to dole out the free winners on Wager Talk TV. A reminder, I am number one in football this season at Wager Talk, hitting a combined 68% in NFL and college, 6-1 in NFL the last two weeks. Also hit my first 5%. CFB max bet of the season. Sorry, I got a little choked up there thinking about that first CFB max bet of the season. It was Texas Tech taking care of Arizona State. Special offer. If you buy a three-month all-access pass, we will throw in an additional fourth month of service free of charge. That is an instant $299 savings. So you're getting 120 days worth of plays at less than $49 per week and $7 per day. Just a massive savings. Head on over to wt.buzz slash bp. And subscribe today. Again, number one in football this season at Wager Talk. Number one in soccer since April. So that's going to do it for the Wednesday edition of the Power Five. Make sure you are subscribed to the Wager Talk YouTube channel as I've not only got you covered daily with the Power Five, but every Monday through Friday, me and Mark Zinno do the morning wager. So until next time, guys, let's catch some tickets.